from Concord University in Athens, West Virginia. This is Mountain Lion News. Hello and welcome to MLN. I'm Erica Garns. If you are looking for something to do on the campus beautiful, look no further. Here's MLN's Monica Hutchins with Campus Connection. Welcome to Campus Connections, where you can get the scoop on what's going on around campus. Here are a few things to look into. If you are in the Halloween spirit and looking for some fright, look no farther. On Friday, October 20th, there will be a trip to Scarewinds Amusement Park in Concord, North Carolina. Students must sign up since there is unlimited seating. The tickets cost $15 per person with no refunds and will departure on the 20th at 4 o'clock p.m. To sign up, go to the Post Office, International Student Office, the Student Center Office, or at the Beckley Campus. Concord will be hosting a fall open house from 8 o'clock a.m. to 1 o'clock p.m. on Saturday, October 21st. There will be a Red Cross blood drive on Tuesday, October 24th in the ballroom of the Student Center from 11 o'clock a.m. till 5 o'clock p.m. Come out and donate. In the ballroom of the Student Center, there will be indoor roller skating from 7 o'clock p.m. till 10 o'clock p.m. on Wednesday, October 25th. Come out and show everyone your moves. On Thursday, October 26th, from 8 o'clock a.m. till 4 o'clock p.m., Concord will be hosting the annual Business Challenge in the Student Center. The Concord Business Challenge is to encourage high school students to excel in business subjects and to prepare them for real world and for higher education challenges. I'm Monica Hutchins, and this was Campus Connections. Thank you for watching. Back to you, Erica. In light of the recent tragedy surrounding Hurricane Harvey last week, students of Concord decided to do something to help those in need. Thanks to students in a University 100 class, Concord hosted a live concert event with a new upcoming, upcoming band known as The Change. University 100 student Gracie Hodges filled us in on why their class decided to host this event. What really started us doing this is I remember watching the news and watching these hurricanes starting to come in and how badly devastated the areas were. And I just wanted to start a movement and start something that was going to help because we're blessed enough to live in a state where we don't have to deal with, you know, tragic weather unless it's like a blizzard. Um, so I just thought it was, you know, one human to another. It was our job to help out, especially when our neighbors were in such need of it. And so I brought the idea up in a University 100 class one Thursday and everybody loved it. And from then it was just all go. We've not had any troubles. We've just kept going with it and it's been a great experience. Um, I know the girls performing. Um, they came for free. They wanted to help as much as they could. I actually went to school with these girls. And so I've been, I've been close to them growing up. We're all from the Princeton area, and so they were just excited to help, and I was glad to have them because, as you can see, they can perform. They're a great band, and uh, the turnout was greater than I expected. While the band performed, the University 100 class also collected donations and sold baked goods. At the end of the night, a 50-50 raffle was done, and one lucky winner received half of the money collected, and the rest went to the Harvey Flood Relief Foundation. Concord University observed Banned Books Week, a national week set aside to remember that books are challenged and in some cases banned in America and across the world. MLN's Lucas Berry spoke to staff librarian Doug Moore about why it is important to observe Banned Book Week. Well, it's very important to know that things are challenged, that one day a book that you personally may love, you may not like to read, is no longer available to you. Uh, could be because of a particular point of view, could be because of a sexual orientation, uh, could be because of any group's desire to restrict that material. Moore says that a banned book is one that has actually been taken off the shelves and that a challenged book has gained scrutiny and has had attempts made to ban it. Concord has never banned a book or any item. Concord dates back to 1872 and the university is showing off some history at the new Mountain Lion Museum. MLN's Lucas Berry spoke to the museum director, Connie Schumitt, about the museum. 
We started the museum in 2016 with the idea that if Concord students knew a little bit about the history of the school itself, they might instill some bit of school pride, um, some pride in them that they are attending a school that began in 1872 and just the richness the the history that goes along with that and i think it's working the people who have been there the people who have seen it absolutely love it and just can't believe that they're going to a school that has existed since 1872. the museum is open fridays from 10 in the morning until 12 noon and on Wednesday, October 8th, Concord University held its very first ever drive-in movie. The movie chosen for this first time Concord event was Marvel's Spider-Man Homecoming. And even before the sun had set, students were lining in the front of the parking lot to get the best seats. After a slight mishap with the screen setup, the movie began at 8.30, and after such a turnout, it's quite possible Concord University will be hosting more drive-ins in the future. Last week was full of midterm exams for the students at Concord University, but luckily the week only lasted three days before fall break started. The Monday after fall break ended Mountain Lion News reporter Kiana Johnson was able to catch up with some of the students to see what they did during their fall break. Let's hear what they had to say. Uh, over fall break, I'm from Clarksburg, so I went home. Uh, one night I went up to Morgantown, had a pretty good time up there, and then the rest of the time I just spent with my family because I haven't seen them in a while. Over fall break, my family and I went to the homeless shelter and fed the homeless people. Uh, it was really fun and really eye-opening. Um, over fall break, I went and saw my family, and then we all went to Morgantown and uh, visited some of my other family and had a good time. I went back to my hometown, Baltimore, and I took my nieces and nephews to the movies. Sounds like everyone had a great break. Now, let's toss it over to Kiana Johnson for her segment of Mountain Munchies. Hello and welcome to this week's segment of Mountain Munchies. I'm Kiana Johnson, and today's food hotspot that we'll be talking about is the one and only Moe's Cafe and Restaurant. Moe's opened up for business in the town of Athens less than three years ago, and since has become a popular restaurant for the residents of the community. Being that they are just minutes away from the Concord University College campus, the students and staff have also made this their lunch and dinner go-to spot. But the convenient location isn't the only thing that keeps the customers flowing in. They are also very well known for their amazing tasting food paired with reasonable prices. Their menu has a wide variety of food that includes American, Greek, and Italian dishes, along with gluten-free options. Moe's offers both the option of dining in and carry out. And if you're a college student, don't forget to bring your student ID for a 10% discount. The owner of the restaurant had a couple of words that she wanted to say to the viewers. Let's take a look. Hi, I'm an owner of Moe's restaurant, Catherine, located in Athens. Uh, we have uh, Italian, American, and Greek food. Uh, we have very nice stuff. We have very nice food. You should come and try it. We have also vegan food for people who are vegetarian or people who are vegan. Uh, we serve our community since 2015 and we're still doing a very good job. You should come and try and we wait for, for it to, to help everyone and to help, to help the community, the people here. We have very nice atmosphere. It's like a family place, very nice view. You should come and, and try and give it a shot and thank you so much. Not only is the food and location perfect, but the amazing staff and family oriented atmosphere that they provide will make you fall in love with Moe's even more. Now that's all we have for today's Mountain Munchies. I'm Kiana Johnson and thank you for watching. Well, it's once again that time of year. The leaves are changing and eventually everyone will be ex exchanging their shorts and skirts for sweaters and coats. This time last year, I was able to sit down and talk with the activities director at Pipe Stem State Park. Let's see what Pipe Stem has in store for us this fall. Well, you know, Pipe Stem, we are um, a state park. We are a little over 4,000 acres. Uh, we opened Memorial Day 1970 and we've got a lot to offer. We do a lot of recreational activities. 
Um, we play a lot of golf, five different kinds of golf here on the park. If you are an ID holder with the university, you do receive a discount on your greens fees. Just need to ask at the golf shop. Um, you know, we've got RC race tracks, we've got archery available, we rent bicycles and lawn games. Um, there's just all kinds of stuff happening on the park. We've got a lake, you can fish, you can do boating down there. Um, you know, uh, pretty much as easy as getting on the website, pipestemresort.com and looking us up. Is there anything you could say to the Concord students who aren't really sure about coming here? Is there any um, other activities that you can think of that if they're not really outdoors people that they could come in and do inside? Um, we offer special things all throughout the year. Like I said before, we offer activities through our nature center. Um, if you're a student that has children, um, there's lots of children's events going on, lots of crafting, that type of thing. Um, we offer for families as well as, as university students, we do offer lodging discounts. So if your family's coming to visit, think, you know, here's a great place for them to stay. Um, there are always opportunities for employment on the park. There are opportunities to volunteer on the park, if that's what you like to do. Our naturalist hires a seasonal naturalist each year, so everybody be on the lookout for that. Think about that this winter. If that's something you're interested in doing, you know, it's a great opportunity. That does sound really exciting. Well, thank you so much for sitting down and talking with me. You're welcome. Thanks for coming out today. Coming up after the break, we have Lucas Berry with this week's Sports Minute. Stay tuned when MLN returns. Welcome back to MLN. I'm sitting down here with Lucas Berry, but oh my gosh, did you see the segment on Moe's? Oh, I know. It was fantastic. Oh my gosh, I love their food there. How many times do you think you've been there? I don't think I've been there now that, now that I think about it. You've never been there? No. Okay, well, we have to amend that. We have to take a trip there now, but okay, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Before we do that, you're here to talk about sports. That's correct. I am. All right, hit me with your best shot. What That's, do we got for this week? We've got some men's soccer for you. Let's get down to it. The Concord University men's soccer team hosted the number one nationally ranked University of Charleston Sunday evening at Anderson Field. The Mountain Lions lost to Charleston with a score of 3-0. The Mountain Lions held their own as they took on Charleston. The Golden Eagles scored within the 10th minute, although the Mountain Lions were able to keep Charleston in check throughout the remainder of the first half. Concord was able to keep Charleston out of the net for the majority of the second half, Though in the 87th minute, the Mountain Lions had a chance to tie up the game with forward Sam Ashton's shot from the top of the 18-yard box to the foot of sophomore midfielder Maximi Remiuli, whose shot went wide of the goal. Less than two minutes after the shot on Charleston, the Golden Eagles scored and added the third goal on a free kick after a yellow card given to senior Dean Bynes from a foul right outside the box with less than 30 seconds remaining in the game. Although the Mountain Lions held their own, defeat was in the cards. Final score, Concord nil, Charleston 3 at the final whistle. And that's all I have for sports. Erica, care to take us home? Yeah, and, but I got to say, first of all, you know, you, your heart goes out to them because you know they played their best. They really, they tried so hard. Absolutely. Two goals in the final 13 minutes of the game made it look worse than it was. To be 1-0 at 87 is against the number one team in the country is a very, very good thing. Well, I think they can do nothing but grow from this. So I think even though it's a loss, I think it's still a good experience for them. Absolutely. Those are there are games like that. You may lose, but you take a lot from them and you move on. All right. Well, you know, thanks for that. And we're going to close this up. That's all for MLN this week. I'm Erica Garns, and we'll see you in two weeks.